Welcome to this presentation. My name is Henrik. I'm an e-learning consultant and I'm also teaching environmental subjects. I'm very happy for the invitation to talk at this conference at the KNUST. Unfortunately, I cannot be here in person, so therefore I made this online presentation instead. The lecture is about e-learning, perspectives and approaches. Apart from talking about the subject, I will also showcase a few ways of making online lectures. The first part of my talk is recorded with my smartphone and later on I'll show you two other ways to record for comparison. First you might ask yourself, why should we teach using e-learning? Is it because we, to, we want to be fancy, to impress the students so they can see we are in the front end, and that we can manage technologies? that we are the cool people? Of course not. But there are two main reasons to do e-learning. The first one is actually to improve the learning using ICT in teaching. At first, some people might worry that e-learning actually means less contact between the teacher and the student. But in traditional teaching, we do a lot of one-way communication from the teacher to a class of uh, students and only very few students actually dare to ask questions. We also load students with readings and self-managed exercises and uh, just in the good cases they get uh, proper feedback on what they are doing. With e-learning we can actually improve the contact between the teacher and the student. One of the main approaches today is the flipped classroom thinking. Instead of coming to lectures at the university, you see the lectures at home, which the teacher has prepared in advance, possibly supplemented by other online materials. Then you come to classes to do activities together with the teacher and the fellow students. In this way, you dedicate the meeting time between the teacher and the students for interaction, which is effective and gives a deeper learning. Online lectures are often very popular with the students. The students love that they can watch whenever they have time to concentrate. They can watch it uh, all over again. They can watch it at their own speed. And you, as your lecturer, you can prepare the wording exactly as you want it to be. The second reason to do e-learning is that it opens up for new possibilities of teaching. For example, universities are often teaching students that are having jobs in the daytime and some of them far away from the university. If you can put some of the teaching online, and that could be both lectures, assignments, exercises, discussions, for most of the teaching period, then you would be able to serve both a larger amount of students and also to improve the learning. A typical layout of a course for part-time students could be some weeks of entirely online teaching and then intermediate sections where you meet the university like a day, a weekend or one or two weeks. All the teaching I have mentioned of course need to be produced in a pedagogical, sensible and coherent way. The next parts of this lecture I'll give you a few examples on how to do this. The way I see it, in teaching you need to prepare two things for your students. The resources, which are things the students need to read or watch, and the activities, which are tasks that the students have to solve actively. In this second part of the lecture, I'll talk about various types of online resources. This part is recorded as a screencast with inclusion of my inserted video recorded by the webcam on the computer. It's presumably the simplest way that any teacher can produce an online video lecture. So this type of resource. The online lectures can have many forms. I showed you the one recorded with the smartphone, a so-called talking head style, where the teacher's face and expressions are in focus. In other situations, the visual side is the most important, and the detailed video may, would mainly be disturbing. So you can remove the video totally and only include the speed recording on top of the graphics, pictures or animations. One kind of old school way to record is even to place a webcam pointing downwards and record your drawing as you would do on the blackboard. On a touch screen computer like the iPad, certain apps can record your drawing on the screen. It may often give a sense of talking at the speed where the student can follow you. 
The much more simple resource is of course to distribute reading materials or links to useful websites. Still reading is of course an important resource for university studies. Articles are now almost entirely published online as PDFs and textbooks are going the same way in the advanced forms as ebooks. One thing that is important to note is the ever increasing amount of open educational resources or OERs on the internet that can be used as part of any course. OERs range from video lectures, ebooks, simulations, photos, texts, or even whole but short courses, so called MOOCs. For example, I produced a five weeks MOOC on global environmental management at Coursera.org in September 2015, and I used it as part of my regular university course. So now all the 35 online lectures are available to anyone to use in their teaching. Open educational resources can also be data bank with, for example, health data. OERs has a huge potential for supplementing your course with quality material, but it takes some effort to find exactly what you need and to make sure that it's still available the next year. And this is the third part of my presentation. As you can see, I moved outside, so we can see if that gives any advantage for the presentation. I'm going to talk about the activities. So what are the good activities you can do online? A forum discussion is a kind of a slow way of discussing. You as a teacher, you pose a question or a good um, exercise for the students. So they will spend time on preparing uh, uh, like a couple of paragraphs for their first posting. Later on, they will comment on other people's postings. So, this kind of discussion is quite effective compared to the discussion you can have in class because when you have a classic uh, discussions there would only be two or three people uh, voice, uh, raising their voice in the discussion and here everyone can participate. Like any other online activity it's a good idea to make it compulsory for the students to participate otherwise uh, not always all the students will post in the discussion. The most common type of online activity is probably the quizzes. This is where you test the students' retention of what they have read, what they have seen, and uh, it can also be used in a little more advanced way to test if the students have solved a, a complicated exercise, an exercise that have uh, one certain answer, so they can uh, put the answer into the quiz. Um, you can also do more advanced exercises where, where the exercises gives feedback as you write into the exercise, but these are more complicated to make. But all assignments doesn't always have one single answer. We would often like the students to write a short report, something that is longer than what they can do in the online discussions. And here it becomes a problem to correct all these reports for this teacher if there are many. One solution to this is to do peer assessment, where the students are actually reading their peers and giving feedback. If the, you as a teacher make a very uh, precise guide on how to correct those assignments uh, as a so-called rubric, then you can get really good results out of that. Finally, there are some good possibilities of supporting online collaboration. For example, working in wikis like the Google Docs, which can be supported by uh, speaking using the Skype or Google Hangouts. These are good tools for online collaboration. So let me end my presentation here. Teaching with e-learning, providing online resources and activities for your students is something that all teachers can do. It does take careful planning and practice to do it well, but everyone can do it. And actually everybody has to do it. So, I have shown you now three ways of recording an online lecture. You saw the uh, using the smartphone, you saw the webcam, and now you have seen the GoPro camera. So I could ask you in the end, which of these types of uh, online presentations is best for the learning? Or is it not so important for the learning? Well, this is just a stupid one-way recording, so I cannot see your answer. So thank you very much for your attention.